Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Outer Worlds. When we last left off, we finished up the pilot house. Um, it took me a long time to find the Gaki, just to find... Well, it didn't take me a long time. I searched a long time for the Gaki, realized I had it after walking into an elevator. Anyway, we've got everything back on course, everything's calibrated, we're not going to fall into the atmosphere. Um, and then we made our way over to the distillery, where we are now, and it is quite colorful and probably horrible. There's some incident going on, so without further ado, let's jump in. Alright. Oh man, this place is like... Even without the brain controlling the shrimps. Uh, warning, no trespassing. What's in this door? Oh, I reloaded and now everybody's fine again, so. Is likely beside himself. Everybody's turned around, right? Cool. Oh, you 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 guys I stay go. there. I'm in the janitor's closet alone. It's a lot of weaponry for the janitor's closet. Ooh, I see. We're not supposed to be back here. Ooh, got some green. No, no, no. Damn it. Imagine being at the museum and you just see me, like, back here. Ooh, got some brown, though. Huh. Got whatever that is. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm on my way. Hey, what's up? We're not supposed to be back here. But that's okay. Okay. Why is there a fake door? No. Halcyon Helen's monogrammed cigarette lighter. This lighter inscribed with the initials HH has featured prominently in each of Halcyon Helen's starring roles. Oh, this? It was a gift from an old flame. Ha! Never leave home without it. Never know when it could save your life. Needler prop. This looks like a prop used during the filming that took place on this set. Not much of a weapon. It's too fragile to even pistol whip someone. Jeez. Oh, this is a set. And there's a camera. That makes a lot of sense. Is there anything behind the set? Just the planet. Okay. Well, we can't go through that door. I don't think there are any other doors back here. So, that was interesting. I don't know how you guys went through that door without closing it. So, let's go through here. I think they meant horrible new crimes against humanity like Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. Cold. Ooh. Now that you've seen behind the scenes, I bet you're pretty thirsty. Well, not to worry. We have every flavor of Spectrum available to delight your palate. Please note that tour guests are limited to a maximum of three different Rizzo's flavor samples. All beverages must be consumed on the premises. Rizzo's is not responsible for gastronomic distress, mild hallucinations, or damage to your sense of taste. <gasps> Some of three samples, huh? Joke's on you, Rizzo's. I can't count when I'm drunk. <laughs> also, I'm just taking all the samples because, I mean, who's gonna stop me? Also, I didn't have to spend two grand on the black. It was right freaking there. That's what I get for being impatient. We have them all now, though, so that's good. You okay there, bud? Greetings, tour guest. 
and welcome to the tasting room of the Rizzo's Distillation Station. This unit has been programmed to dispense beverage. Samples to authorized guests. Error. Current guest does not meet the standards of this unit's authorization protocol. Please leave via the nearest available exit. Thank you. You mean not authorized? This taste testing experience is limited to authorized guests. All authorized guests must appear on a list of addresses located in Byzantium. This unit has been programmed to offer critical analysis of all things related to taste. This unit finds your demeanor, appearance, bearing, and or class in very poor taste. The fuck, dude? Just because I don't live in Byzantium? So you're some type of tasting expert? Affirmative. This unit has been programmed to recognize over 2,000 expressions of taste, including, but not limited to, the God. following fruity, acidic, bright, earthy, pungent, tangy, dirt. This unit has also been programmed to criticize your taste in the following clothing brands, cigarettes, etherwave dramas, yeah, okay, bye, asshole. Thank you greatly for stopping by. On behalf of Rizzo's, I hope you enjoyed viewing a small part of our facility. I enjoyed more than you think. I wonder if it would be good now to jump over to Ludovico and be like, hey, what the fuck, let us in. Um... There was a secret place over here. It says it's sealed, though. Okay, yeah, it's still sealed. Um, I know we need to go talk to her. That's kind of a big rock. So I think what we might do is jump back to the Colonial and deal with some of the stuff that's going on there. Because um, we have quite a few quests over there. So let's jump to... Just the front entrance. I'm trying to limit how much I bounce around to just because I don't feel like it's as realistic. Because I like to make it feel like we're actually walking around trying to discover shit. See what the uh, autopsy pulled. Ew. What's up? Inspector, not a moment too soon. I've just finished my autopsy report. Let's hear it. Ruth Bellamy was killed by plasma damage to the upper vertebrae, the occipital bone, and the cerebellum. If it's any consolation, her death was instantaneous and painless. I've also discovered a poisonous compound in Miss Bellamy's stomach lining ingested during her last meal. Toxic, but not enough to kill her. Spencer Woolrich complained of a stomach ailment around the same time period. I assumed he was being, you know, Spencer. But now I'm not so sure. Someone was obviously trying to poison Helen. Almost certainly. Well, possibly they were trying to make her extremely uncomfortable, but I suppose killing her would also satisfy that criterion. Sure wasn't just the hotel food? The thought occurred to me. I tested this hypothesis by vacating the contents of my stomach and testing for the presence of the same toxin. Slightly elevated levels of mercury and an alarming amount of blue food coloring. But other than that, no. I'm certain it wasn't, as you put it, just the hotel food. When we were talking, you called her Ruth Bellamy, not Halcyon Helen. I do believe you're right. I wonder if this has something to do with the autopsy process. She was halcy on Helen up until the moment I brought her to the operating table. But as soon as I cut her open, I stopped thinking of her as halcy on Helen. It's almost as if she stopped being an icon and became a human being. That's pretty fucked up. You're a freelancer of some repute. Surely you're no stranger to seeing the interior organs of a human being. Although, I suspect you do most of your work with a gun, and not a scalpel. I also recognize them as people long before I shoot them, so... Uh, I noticed that you had patient logs on your terminal. I do keep logs of every patient I treat. Despite appearances, I'm not merely a coroner. I'm also the Grand Colonial's only, and therefore greatest, doctor. You sound pretty happy with your work? I'm very pleased with my work. Cedric Kincannon is an outstanding employer. What I'm about to tell you... Do me a favor and keep this between us. 
I love a good secret. I'd much rather work for Slug than Rizzo's. Rizzo's makes a great show about the happiness of its workers, but I think it's all rather artificial. I'm paid well. I work hard. I'm given respect and a reasonable degree of freedom. Cedric and Cannon runs a tight ship. Most of us enjoy working for Slug. Well, better than mine. Will there be anything else? I don't think so. Uh, all right. I think that just speaks to the dehumanizing of celebrities, um, which is a very topical thing right now. Hey, what's up, lady? The Grand Colonial Front Desk warmly welcomes you, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. That... How may I be of assistance to you, Inspector? Uh, I thought the penthouse was being cleaned for my stay, but it's a pigsty. Oh, my. Well, that is certainly odd and alarmingly unacceptable. Allow me to check the service records. Ah, uh, yes. Not to worry, Inspector. It was indeed cleaned for you. Except for the evidence, which is all of Helen's stuff. I need to access the VIP guest floor. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. The only guest who'd have a problem with me being up there would be the murderer. Hmm. That's a good point. If they give me guff, I can just tell them that they're obstructing justice. Exactly. That has a nice ring to it. Let me just set you up with VIP guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. All right, thank you. About time I got some fucking recognition up here. Aha! Always so nice to hear you, Inspector. I'll get you to your floor on the double. I like to visit the VIP guest floor. If you see Black Hole Birdie, be sure to get an autograph for me. Oh, just joking, I've already got one. He signs a lot of autographs, apparently. It's like the third person we've heard. Hey, what's up? Rizzo's Ranger, and also Rizzo's Ranger. I don't know how many people are on a team, but I imagine it's... Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Anyway, uh... Always go right. Knock, knock. Stop. Housekeeping! I'm here to steal your stuff and sell it on the internet for profit. Can you not? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't check above the toilet. Ooh, fedora. Door, you say? Nice. Ooh. Nice suit, too. Tech skills plus five? What does that give me? Oh, is that just a. Never mind. That's a normal, like. Oh, it's all of these. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Um, but does it give me, like, any armor? Hey, Slug, what's up? I'm just, uh, doing my job. Wow. Nice work. Thanks. Can you guys get no in No problem. Here? I'll head over. Maybe speed it up. Thanks. Oh, my God. Working with the amateurs over here. You make so much money off these rich Byzantiums. Oh, look. I didn't even notice this in the last room. I don't know why I'm closing the door. None of this is stealing. Should be. I guess this is why. Wow, you got that? Well, you can't see outside. It's like there's a balcony out there, too. Can't imagine that you can go out there, though. Oh. Okay, that's where we're supposed to go. Uh, guys?
for Bosh. That's cute. Okay, it's just pictures of himself. Not stealing. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> He has different chassis. Hi. Initiating banter protocol. Now simulating familiar and welcoming demeanor. Greetings, theater aficionado and or dumbstruck fan. You are standing in the vicinity of Burbage 3001. The latest and therefore greatest auto-mechanical actor ever designed. I see you've had some work done. Who upgraded you? Burbage 3001's programming is frequently upgraded to adhere to board certified standards. The most recent upgrade was performed by Spencer Woolrich Banter Protocol exhausted, reverting to default behavior, grieving and despair. Oh, Calcion Helen, may your atoms be commended to the Aether. You knew Halcyon Helen? Helen? Burbage 3001 was designed to disrupt Halcyon Helen's monopoly over the Aetherwave serial market. This unit's programming is based on Helen's most famous roles. Burbage 3001. Anything Halcyon Helen can do, this unit can do slightly worse. I understand the robot voice, but dear lord, it's so slow. Does that include dying? This unit has been programmed to simulate existential dread. Watch Burbage 3001 contemplate its mortality in the critically acclaimed drama Waiting for Results. This unit has not yet completed its grief cycles. Randomizing despair tables. Oh, Helen, is there no justice in the world? All right. The Woolridge change Burbage. I'm starting to wonder if the B that Helen made was actually a W that somebody later altered. You know? That means it could be Woolridge. Oh, this is stealing. Really? Can you not leave? That's what I thought. Since you're just gonna sit there. Might as well get my money's worth. I'm really scared that somebody's gonna walk by in the hall. Oh. I don't need to steal this. Okay. Hmm. What's up? Zeke Hannigan, Rizzo's Rangers 16th back. Pleased to meet you. What can I do for you? How long have you been with the Rangers? About half my life. You know I was named third most profitable investment on two non-consecutive seasons? Ain't a lot of players who can make that claim. Hmm. Except for the guys who came in first and second, I guess. I spent the last season injured and almost got sold to the Hephaestus Hammers. But now I'm all convalesced. Ready to lay into some Cleo darlings, you know? Really break some legs. What brings the Rangers to Eridanos? Since it's the off-season, we're helping support the launch of Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Meet the fans, sign tossball cards, that sort of thing. How about you, fella? You after a signature? Nah, I think I'll pass. Oh? He's just being coy. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> just between you and me, Rizzo's ought to cancel the whole event out of respect for Miss Helen. Uh, I had some questions about her, actually. Oh, you must be that inspector people have been talking about. It's a damn shame about Miss Helen. 
She was always real good to me and the rest of the Rangers. Bertie's taking it pretty hard. Miss Helen was the love of his life. Mm. So, what did you want to know? Tell me about Bertie and Helen. Oh, Bertie was mad about Helen. He was certifiable. The big galoot loved Helen about as much as he loved the game. Trouble is, Bertie was not blessed with an abundance of temper. Helen kept Bertie steady. If he lost his temper around her, it'd be because something broke between the two of them. Hmm. Can you think of anyone who would want to kill Helen? Miss Helen was outspoken. She made her share of enemies on account of her expressing herself. Hmm. Just between you and me, I heard rumors the Prophet never much cared for Helen's brand of blunt honesty. Do you think Bertie could have done it? What? Law, no. Bertie's got a fierce temper, but there's no way he'd ever have laid a finger on Miss Helen. So where were you? I hate to ask that question, but... I'm ashamed to admit it, but... Me and a couple of the other rangers spend the night in Constable Keen's cells down at the spaceport. Ooh. We didn't do anything serious, just a bit of pranks and vandalism. It's what usually happens when we all get to drinking. Fucking base. Guess Constable Keen saw things a bit Keen differently Constable and had us players. hauled off. Uh, was Bertie in jail with the rest of you? No, we lost him somewhere along the way. Hmm. Or maybe he managed to get away? I can't rightly remember. But he was definitely not sharing a cell with us. That much I know. Okay. What can I do for you? That's it. Thank you for cooperating with my investigation. Where am I? Oh. Oh. We're all seeing that woolly cow, right? Not just me? Okay. Good. I didn't until you pointed it out, but there it is. Uh, will sure. you guys get in here? these nice white doors. Black Hole Birdie is signed Tosswell. This Tosswell signed by Black Hole Birdie, Birdie Black Hole Colcom was presented to Dr. Ma Margrave on a special guest episode of Space Hospital to thank her for removing a Tosswell stick embedded in his head. Um... What is all of this? Does it look good? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Huh. We haven't had one of those in a little bit. Multiple discrepancies detected. First discrepancy. A woolly cow is present in this hotel room. I woolly see that. Woolly cows are an import species for the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve and are incapable of affording upper class accommodations. Second discrepancy. This woolly cow is dangerously inebriated with Rizzo Spectrum Vodka. Alcohol sanguinization ratio exceeds recommended maximum. Jesus. And the recommended maximum blood alcohol ratio for a woolly cow is? Zero. Ah, good to know. A brief survey of this area reveals that the most recent occupants were athletes belonging to the Rizzo's Rangers Tossball Club. How can you tell? A brief survey of localized property damage divided by the area of this room yields the following estimate. This unit was likely occupied by every member of the Rizzo's Rangers. Minus one. Hmm. Need to eat, I think. Where, where has Bertie gone? I've heard stories about, like, baseball teams and stuff wrecking rooms, and it's just... annoying. Jeez Louise. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Jeez Louise. You guys come All right, in here. I'm on the move. The charred fragments of a letter lies at the bottom of this waste basket. Mm, I can make out the word station, meeting point, and emergency. Your observation is correct and quite astute. Well, I'm stumped. Can you, like, poke the ashes? Cold. Any idea when this happened? Someone burned this letter shortly after Halcyon Helen's death. Mm, I need more solid lead. Better keep looking around. Oh. 
online discrepancy detected nearby. Oh. A single footprint, size 10, toss ball cleat sized. Amplifier, analyze the footprint of for any residue. The soil in this residue contains a very high concentration of oxygen. High concentration of oxygen usually points to a terraformer. Well done, Inspector. The weather monitoring station at the pilot house substitutes for a terraformer. The soil in his footprint likely came from there. The clues I found point me to the Phaeton pilot house weather monitoring station. Where we found a dead body. Great. Oh, nice. Toss ball cards. The Dissident Queen, Chapter 2. Did we read this one? Yeah, we already read this. Okay. Interesting. Um, anything over here? Rizzo's? I guess we don't really need to uh, buy any more spectrum. CNP? Oh, they have armor? I didn't know CMP had armor. Ooh, they charge me because they do not like me. That's okay. Seriously? Moving out. Didn't even check if there's anybody in here. I just assumed. Be funny if we got downstairs and somebody's like, Gun somebody done. stole my stuff. Okay. So we just got Spencer's room. You are talented, you are magnificent, you are joy for others to be around, you are delightfully not a two-bit hack. You bring all life to the world around you through the art of theater. Dear Lord. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Discrepancy detected. This bottle, recently discarded, contains residue from foreign substances. Chemical analysis complete. This unit has detected the following substances. Oil, terroray, blood, terroray, unidentifiable biological fluids, terroray. Were these substances added later? Yes, Inspector. Logical analysis indicates these substances were not present in the bottle's original contents. Is it toxic? These substances cause extreme gastrointestinal distress in humans. Large doses can be fatal. This bottle contained Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. The presence of terroray biological fluids may have significantly improved its flavor. Spencer, you have some splainin' to do. Welcome, Spencer Woolridge. Reminder, you have a fingernail in goldening appointment at 5.30 tonight. To management from Spencer, new room urgently demanded. There seems to have been some kind of mistake. When I first arrived at the Grand Colonial for the unveiling, I was led to a small sitting room, the kind that an individual might be allowed to relax in with moderate comfort before being led to his actual quarters. It has been a week and a half, yet no one has arrived to deliver me to my actual room yet. If I don't know, if I didn't know any better, I might assume that this was meant to be my actual room. If I didn't know better, I might assume that you tried to play Spencer Woolridge, star of hundreds of serials, the hero of Aetherwave sets colony wide in a room where he can hardly walk from one into the other without bumping his toe on the foot of his bed or his shoulder upon his desk i might even assume that ruth bellamy was placed in the grand colonial penthouse suite on purpose rather than by mistake but i'm sure the issue will be rectified soon and our positions will be swapped i hope you won't try to tell me anything to the contrary s rulridge to spencer from management 
Mr. Woolridge, while the Grand Colonial staff understand your cons consternation, I never know how to say that word, at being placed on the VIP guest level of the Grand Colonial, we're afraid that there was no mistake. Ruth Bellamy, as current spokeswoman for the Spectrum Brown unveiling, is currently slated to have the penthouse suite. An actress of her station deserves only the best. The VIP guest floor comes in very close as the second best selection section of the hotel. The penthouse suite is only about twice as large as your current lodgings, and the amenities it provides are only perhaps three or four times better than you have access to now. Your current lo lodgings are proper for an actor of your caliber. If you have any other questions, we'll be sure to respond to them after we get to the Mrs. Bellamy's. Gate. Okay. Management to all guests. Guest safety. We're sure you've no doubt heard of the horrible event that occurred at the Grand Colonial Ballrooms earlier today. While we know that many of you are concerned for your safety, take heed. We've heard your concerns and know that nothing quite says safety like dozens of guns. Armed security will be present all throughout the Grand Colonial on every floor except employee floors 24-7. Please go about the hotel premises and spend your heart's con content without worrying about someone shooting you in the back of the head. Peep for me. Okay. Uh, Danger Close by Spencer Woolridge, Jack 7, scene 15. Open at the pilot house night. Joannes Danger, played as always by the dashing Spencer Woolridge, stands hands clasped on the roof of the pilot house. He is deeply absorbed in the thought, his, fur his furrowed brow and downturned lips making his refined face look all the more handsome. There is a knock on the door. Enter Lionel, Danger's faithful ma manservant. Lionel. Sir, what's the matter? Everyone looks f looking for you. They want to celebrate how you single-handedly saved Aridonis from Boss Masher and the dissident junk ship. Danger. Ah, Lionel, thank you for coming to get me. I love to rejoin the others. Truly, I would. Lionel. But? But when I fired my home-built anti-craft cannon, destroying the junk ship with a single shot and a flaming piece of shrapnel landed in the middle of the Rizzo's distillery, several workers were killed, but worst of all, the damage to the facility will take thousands of bits to repair. Sir. You are much too hard on yourself. Though the facility was damaged, you saved hundreds of lives by destroying the dissidents. If those people had been freed by the dissidents, that is, killed, the losses in future capital would have been much worse. You've saved our corporation from their, that fate. Perhaps you're right, my friend. Perhaps you're right. I am, sir. Now come along. Let us drink a refreshing bottle of Rizzo Spectrum Brown in celebration for your victory. I like that very much. Okay. Jeez Louise. All right. About time you arrived. I see you haven't dressed the way I asked you to, but I suppose that was expecting too much of a non-industry lout. Expect a complaint to management now. Sure. Unless you'd like to waste more of my time, I suggest we begin rehearsing. Ready? <coughs> You've fallen right into my trap, Captain. Oh, don't bother to fight back. You cannot hope to stop me from installing philosophism as the system's reigning ideology. Tempting. You know what? Sure, why not? Oh, you, you wouldn't harm an old man at the end of his wits, would you? I, I'm confused, disoriented. I may have even soiled myself. Wait, if you're armed, that must mean you're not with the hotel staff. Oh, no, this is curious indeed. Who are you, and how did you get in here? Name's Will O'Hara. I'm a ship captain. And yet, you found your way to my humble hotel room. Why do I feel there's more of a reason for you to be here than you let on? I think I know, you cheeky little sprat. Now, what shall I sign first? Your weapon? Your wallet? Or perhaps something uh, a Please little more personal? Touch. Undergarment signatures have been popular of late, or so I've heard. Dear God, no. I'm here, f I'm not here for an autograph. I'm here to ask you some freaking questions. Do you mean to say you are not a fan? Well, then how did you get in here? The only staffer cleared for guest room entry is the inspector for Bellamy's murder. Oh. Uh, oh! Uh, <clears throat> hello. Uh, hello. <clears throat> uh, 
Hi. Uh, terribly sorry, Inspector. I didn't realize it was you. Uh, understand that I am beyond willing to comply with your search for the fiend that did Bellamy in. You know, now that I look at you, <laughs> you're the perfect reflection of me. Uh, back when I starred Ugh. in the Marauder's Bane. The absolute picture of justice. Ask me anything at all. I, I might even give you a straight answer. Why do you have to insult me like that? I've learned a thing or two about your activities in the hotel. Oh, have you now? Please do go on. Uh, uh, don't leave me in suspense. I spoke to Brabage. He told me you upgraded him? I did indeed. With Halcy and Helen parading her fame about, I was... Left without an acting partner. Burbage is no exception. His acting protocols <laughs> were nothing short of a joke. So I decided to make some modifications. Installing him with some of my old serial quotes has, I think, improved his range. The way he bungled about with that weapon of his hardly befitted a dissident. So I modified it as well. He's much quicker on the draw now, though he's still a machine. I've got my eye on you. I'm quite used to being breathlessly watched. Team of us. I'd like to ask you about the murder. Certainly. But one quick question before we begin, if I may. How was it that Bellamy met her end? Painfully, I'd say. How? How awful. Whoever did this must have been quite heartless. Did you know Helen well? Bellamy has been my co-star throughout the autumn of my career. I should like to think I knew her. In fact, I cannot name a single role in the last ten years that did not involve her in some way. Unless you count the uncredited silent shopkeep on Melissa's meteoroids. Okay. Did you consider yourself a friend? I'll ask you this. If you'd been the star of cinema for years, then suddenly found yourself scrounging for bit parts while a younger person stole the limelight, how would you feel? In short, the two of us weren't close. But that's not to say my dislike of her was so extreme that I tried to do anything drastic. Resenting Bellamy is one thing, but killing her is another completely. It's also beneath me. Is it? All right, speaking through it. Theoretically, how would you have killed the victim? Oh, come now, Inspector. What do you take me for? I'm an old man. I neither have the time nor the willpower to kill people for fun. Besides, I have my reputation to think of. All right. What were you up to at the time of the murder? I was meditating, of course. That's how I get into character. You were meditating? Really? All actors have their methods. And this has been mine ever since I met that wonderful prophet of profitability. She taught me it for my role in The Unemployed Cometh. I had to lie face down on artificially heated pavement. The director wanted our suffering to be convincing. Needless to say, being able to leave my body helped to mitigate the pain, both during the eight-hour shoot and with the second-degree burns afterwards. I owe that woman much. How long have you worked with the Prophet? Yeah, actually, only since I've been at the Colonial. The unemployed Cometh was shot on sight. That makes it um, a few weeks. I cannot recommend her services enough. If you haven't been to see her yet, you really should. Hmm. Got anybody who can corroborate this? Respectfully, Inspector. It is rather counterproductive to commune with others while meditating. So no. I'll answer whatever you wish. I mean, you're pretty, like, gross as a human, but, like... I suppose that I is don't enough on that think you're subject. sus. Here you were poisoned. Indeed. The agonizing bowel pain was most undignifying. 
While I've certainly had no shortage of inadequate hotel meals, this was most explicitly pronounced. I suspect poison. And who would be most likely to poison me but Chef Anwar? Oh, we've clashed almost non-stop about his slop preparation. He must have tainted my meal in retaliation. Uh, why didn't you go to the clinic with for your stomach pains? Is that a jibe? Could you imagine the tabloid headlines? Spencer Woolrich, Aether Wave star, spotted in gastronomic distress. Oh, unseemly hardly describes the half of it. Can you think of any other... Anyone other than the chef who would want to harm you? None that I can think of. I treat all hotel staff equally. And with the minimum level of respect that they deserve. According to the coroner, Helen was also poisoned. How alarming! Whoever targeted her was certainly targeting me. I can only thank my ironclad constitution that I'm standing here before you. Helen wasn't killed by the poison. Oh, oh, that's very good to know. Perhaps the poisoner simply meant to incapacitate us both, uh, disrupt the product launch. I couldn't say, Inspector. I'm merely an actor. Hmm. Very well, then. Also, who are you? I'm sure you're joking. Perhaps I'm not in my prime, but you've no doubt seen the name Spencer Woolrich on many a serial advertisement throughout your travels. Never heard of you. Uh, that can't be. You must just not remember. Or perhaps you only recognize my characters, not my name. Did you ever see me in the Masked Marketeer? Uh, the Busker of Byzantium? Uh, what about episodes 13 and 190 of Princess of Hephaestus? I don't really... And who could forget from Halcyon with love? I was great in that movie. Even if I was starring beside a two-ton bucket of bolts... And a woman with no talent. <laughs> Busker of Byzantium? Helen wrote a B to implicate her killer before she died. I think that's a bit of a stretch, don't you? If you're going to come after me, I expect evidence. Unless you want to be smacked with litigation. Smacked! Get my eye on I you. Certainly hope that's just a prop. Oh. All right. Well, that was informative. More than I could have imagined. Let's see. Yeah, we got to go downstairs and talk to the chef. Uh, pilot house again. Profit to profitability. A2 in the lower level of the Grand Colonial. And then... Oh, we got to go back to the nut hut. Okay. Let's go talk to the chef. Lobby, please. I feel like we're kind of doing stuff out of order, but like, why are they gonna make it all out of order? You know what I mean? Oh, the chef. That's where we were going. Oh, no. The chef is in here. Nope. Uh, the chef is in here. Yes. Yes. Hey. Yes? Are you here for the double rack of smoked sprat? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you'll have to wait. I'm okay with oh, that. Oh, don't give me that look. Let me see if I can pencil you in for later. Actually, what am I saying? I can't do that. I'm booked for the next month. You'll have to make a reservation. I'm here to investigate Halsey and Helen's murder. I'd like to ask you a few questions. You're, you're the inspector? Here? Why? <laughs> I, I mean, you may ask me whatever you want. I have nothing to hide. So you said you're the hotel chef. What's that like? I prep dishes day in and day out for guests, and while I doubt their palates are refined enough for my flavors, the work is rewarding. After all, I can take pride knowing that I simply am the best cook this side of Halcyon. No one else can even hope to compare. You seem pretty wed to your craft. Were you in the kitchen at the time of the murder? Uh, no. As it so happens, I was down in the employee break room. 
I wasn't taking an unsanctioned break, of course. I was merely fetching ingredients. Did you prepare all of Hel Helen's meals? Of course I did. I would never allow anyone else to touch the meals of so important a guest. You sure no one else was involved? Well, well, yes, I'm positive. Why? If Helen was poisoned and no one else touched her meal, you poisoned her, right? Oh. Oh, my law, this is the end, isn't it? My mother always warned me that the culinary world was too dangerous, but I didn't heed her warnings. Spencer Woolrich and Bellhop Owens were underfoot in the kitchen as I was preparing Helen's meal. Either one of them could have tampered with the food when I was fetching ingredients. Why are you being so evasive about leaving Helen's food unattended? Well, it's a breach of professionalism, of course. Why else would I worry about it? If you tell me the truth, I might be more inclined to believe the rest of what you say. Well, I suppose that's as good a point as any I've heard. I may have taken some time to engage in a teensy bit of recreational drinking, and consequently, I may have been somewhat less than coherent after preparing Helen's meal. What was Spencer Woolridge doing around the kitchen? Mr. Woolridge often finds the hotel's meals wanting. He seems to enjoy complaining in person. While I could appreciate someone with a discerning palate for once, I believe that Mr. Woolridge simply enjoys the attention he gets from us. Though, don't tell him I said as much. If you wish to speak with him, Mr. Woolrich can most likely be found in his suite on the VIP guest floor. He's usually there if he's not poking around here. Alibi's a little thin here. Why should I believe anything that you're saying? I understand your reluctance, but... Oh! Oh! I just remembered! The kitchen security camera. It'll prove I'm telling the truth about everything. Constable Keen has access to the security footage in her office at the spaceport. If you visit her, you can figure out what truly happened with Helen's meal. Any idea where I might be able to find Bellhop Owens? Yes, but not specifically. Owens often procures exotic ingredients from the creatures at the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve. Our guests can be rather... particular. Let's not talk about the incident with the Raptodon pheromone glands. It's always hard it's to not. say when Owens might be back. If I were you, I'd make a trek to the reserve myself. Otherwise, who knows how long you'll have to wait. So I wanted to ask. Guess we'll see if you're telling the truth. Thank you for your understanding, Inspector. I'm sure you'll find the true culprit before long. Hmm. Maybe the Woolridge isn't innocent. Um, okay. Uh, next episode, we will make our way down to the lower levels somehow. And check out one of the quests that we have that says check out A2. Um, and then we got to go back to the nut hut. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys back here next time.